has been trying to say my name for two minutes. It's Brian Patrick Flynn, and the name of my firm is Flynn Side Out. Does that help? That helps. It's Thank kind you. of a tongue twister, so I figured I would just jump in here okay. because you're not the first person to fail at that. It's kind of a thing. Does that and make it easier? And he's from Atlanta, there Georgia, we go. so there we go. My Let's main residence is here in Atlanta. I'm only about five minutes here from America's Mart. Um, then we have a weekend house in the mountains, but four years ago we fell in love with Iceland. So we ended up buying a, a summer home there. And my whole aesthetic started to change after I started to spend my summers in Scandinavia. Uh, the whole term huga, which is H-Y-G-G-E, it's this whole Scandinavian term about like the feeling of home and pairing things back to only the stuff that you love, the stuff you need. It's all about comfort and feeling relaxed. And that's what we've done here today in the showroom is we put together this entire tablescape that really fits the huga lifestyle. And they have a bunch of Nordic inspired products here, as you can see from the plates and I you can see from the planters these. or even the yarn covered trees. Even over here, we've got the yarn trees and also the, uh, the reindeer. We thought it would be smart to show people how to put together a tablescape that really teaches you the art of Hoga. So everything is kind of in the Nordic world. It's all natural materials. There's not a lot of colors. So there's no commitment. And these are all things you can keep forever. Like, you, you know, things like this never go out of style. So when it comes to trends, I think that the pendulum always goes from one side all the way to the other. And back in the early 2000s, uh, maximalism and layers and layers and more and more and more was the thing. Now with the whole millennial generation, you're seeing things paired back mostly to really strong architecture just a few key pieces and a lot of negative space. I think the next trend will be in the middle. I think the key to using color is to not really invest in pieces that are sold on only being tied to one palette. A lot of times if you look at a really well done room, maybe the only thing in the room that's painted a color is the walls. And perhaps everything else in the room might just be neutrals. And the thing that's great about that is you can change the paint color 50,000 times and keep all the stuff that you have if all the pieces you buy are rooted in classicism. And you can have like, all different neutrals and a bright pink background, and it's just a few cans of paint. Every single house that I work on, I think it's really important to honor the vernacular with the interior design. So if that means some of the arts bought locally, or if a bunch of the antiques came from houses around the neighborhood that were left in the basement or sold with the house, I think it's really important to, to, to acknowledge that. I also think that you're really doing a good thing for the environment anytime you bring antiques into the house. Like buying everything new means something had to be cut down to make it. So I think that the key to like, being responsible is mixing old and new, honoring the vernacular you live in, and also choose, choosing objects that you don't really ever get rid of. You know, anything, if anything ends up in the trash, it's not good for anyone. So the more picky you are about what you bring into the house, the more likely you are to keep it for a long time.